this time the chair calls Cheryl Railsback. And if you could please state your name and who you represent and if you are on for or against HB 575. Okay, my name is Cheryl Railsback. <clears throat> and I'm, I am for House Bill 575, and I am here for myself and my son, Shane Doutweiler. Good evening, and thank you, Chairman Dutton and committee, for allowing me to speak once again. We should be focusing on the children and the impact of not having grandparents in their lives. Under current law, it is very difficult for a grandparent to get a court to give us visitation. House Bill 575 goes in the right direction by making it less difficult to obtain access to our grandchildren when a parent denies us contact. This bill may not help me, but it is a start and may help others. My son Shane was a law enforcement officer who was shot and killed in the line of duty on July 13th of 2009. In a short period of time, my young grandchildren had to deal with their mother's hospitalization for a serious mental illness, their father was murdered, and their maternal grandfather, with whom they were living at the time, was dying of cancer. Even with all of that happening to them, the law would not allow me to come to their aid. After the birth of their youngest son, child, my daughter-in-law was hospitalized for postpartum psychosis. Before and during this time, thank you. <clears throat> Before and during this time, I was the children's primary caretaker and was the responsible adult that took them to doctor's appointments, ear surgeries, Mother's Day out, church, etc. After Shane was murdered, my daughter-in-law moved in with her parents while her father was dying of cancer. For a short time, we were permitted to see the children on occasion. Then visitation was taken away completely as time passed. We attempted court intervention to no avail. This was almost an impossible burden to prove, even after all the children had been through, but I knew the children were harmed by losing all contact with us. After the court case, we had no access to the children and were not allowed to communicate. By happenstance, I ran into my daughter-in-law and grandchildren in Washington, D.C. during National Police Week in 2016. We were able to and allowed to have contact with the children for a while, then just a uh, week before Thanksgiving that year, we deci they decided to cut us out of their lives again without explanation. The oldest child is now 14, the middle child is 11, and the baby is 10. I miss them terribly, and I know that they miss us as well, especially after getting to spend time together again. I not only lost my precious son, but I lost my three beautiful grandchildren as well. And more, and more importantly, they lost us. The current law does not focus enough on what is in the best interest of the children. After all, it is by the grace of God that you do not find yourselves in this situation. Thank you for letting me testify for myself and my son. Thank you. And I'm sorry to hear about your son. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? No, thank you. 